designer dragons were six legendary synchro monsters, each wielded by a person who had been marked by the Crimson Dragon. These individuals were known as signers. Many millennia ago, a legendary duelist who wielded the combined power of the Crimson Dragon and all its servants together fought against the Earthbound Immortals, which were evil gods that sought nothing but the eradication of human life in order to feed their own power. During the battle, the legendary signer defeated the strongest of the Earthbound Immortals, the Crimson Devil, Red Nova. He did so by harnessing the power of his mark of the Crimson Dragon. Many years of peace preceded this event, until eventually the legendary duelist passed away. But not before his mark of the dragon split itself into multiple pieces, and went into hiding until the day it would be needed again. Sadly, this day would arrive in the form of the Zero Reverse. <laughs> Due to all the negative energy released from the blast, the Earthbound Immortals reawakened, and in response, so did the Sino Dragons. Five modern day duelists would inherit the power of the Crimson Dragon along with one of its servants. Stardust Dragon would find Yusei Fudo with the mark of the Dragon Head, Red Dragon Archfiend would find Jack Atlas with the mark of the wings, Black Rose Dragon would find Akiza Izinski with the mark of the foot, Ancient Fairy Dragon would find Luna with the mark of the hand, and and finally, Blackwing Dragon found Crow Hogan, with the mark of the tail, which had been passed to him from Yusei. Before we go any further, let's address the issue of the 5Ds, shall we? Basically, the show is called Yu-Gi-Oh! 5Ds because there are five dragons. Five Ds. However, as you may have noticed, there are actually six Ds, since there is one final sign of dragon, who was the Lifestream Dragon, who was the one to find Leo with the heart of the Crimson Dragon Mark. So if the show was called Yu-Gi-Oh! 5 Ds, but it ended up having six Ds, well, why did this happen? Well, the behind the scenes reason, according to the creator of the series, was that originally Leo was meant to get his signer mark way earlier in the series, and Crow instead was going to become a dark signer and serve as the main antagonist of the Dark Signer arc. However, due to Crow and his deck's popularity, Black Wings, it was changed so Crow became a signer instead of Leo. Because if you think about it, hey, if Black Wings are popular with the kids and they're doing pretty well at tournaments, then we should probably keep them around, right? This wouldn't be such a huge issue, except for the fact that, well, in the past, the first flashback of the battle with the Sino Dragons, you actually do see Lifestream Dragon very clearly there while Blackwing Dragon is completely non-existent. Then, if you fast forward to later in the series after Crow has become a signer, now in another flashback it seems that Blackwing Dragon was in fact present in the duel against the Crimson Devil, being wielded by the first legendary signer, and now Livestream Dragon is nowhere to be seen. So yeah, it, it's not a big deal, but it's a weird part of the history of the dragon, so I thought I'd cover it here. And it's also worth mentioning that the anime came before the manga, and as such there's some huge differences between the two formats. For example, the Sino Dragons are instead reimagined as the Dual Dragons in the manga instead. The Dual Dragons, honestly, are a lot more ominous and they're harder to keep control of in the manga. As well, there are actually a couple extra dragons. These were owned by Kalin Kessler and Rex Goodwin. The Dual Dragons they owned were Void Ogre Dragon, Ascension Sky Dragon, Drago Necro Neversoul Dragon, which would then evolve into Drago Saitos Corrupted Neversoul Dragon, and finally there was Beals of the Dino Diabolic Dragons, which would then evolve into Beelzeus of the Diabolic Dragons. Oh, and one more noteworthy difference between the anime and manga was the fact that the Crimson Dragon was not the leader of the dragons, but it was instead an evil entity for which the dragons were created to seal. In the manga, its name was Ultimea to Zulkin. However, we'll learn more about that a little bit later. So for now, let's take a look at each one of the Sino Dragons and their upgraded forms, starting with... Stardust Dragon requires one tuner and one or more non-tuner monsters. His effect is when a card or effect is activated that would destroy a card or cards on the field, quick effect, you can tribute this card, negate the activation, and if you do, destroy it. During the end phase, if this effect was activated this turn and was not negated, you can special summon this card from your graveyard. First released in both the 2008 collectible tin as a secret rare, as well as in the Duelist Genesis booster, in which it was available in Ultra, Ultimate, and for a lucky 
few, even ghost rare. If we fast forward 11 years since its debut for the 20th anniversary celebration for Yu-Gi-Oh, it would receive a brand new alternate artwork along with other ace monsters in the TCG's dual power box. Stardust serves as one of the six companion dragons to the Crimson Dragon and acts as the partner and ace monster to its Sino wielder, Yusei Fudo, who was the main protagonist of the Yu-Gi-Oh! 5Ds anime. When Yusei summons Stardust to the field, he chants, Clustering hopes will become a new shining star, become the path its light shines upon, Synchro summon, take flight, Stardust Dragon. The Sina and Sina Dragon pairing do not seem to be random as you look deeper at the Sina Dragon's effects. You begin to notice that they seem to embody a part of the will of their user. For instance, an integral part of Yusei's character is his willingness to go to extreme lengths in order to protect those around him, being more than happy to throw himself in harm's way should his friends ever be in danger. This selflessness stems from the fact that due to the actions of his father, many people lost their lives in a horrific event. You say feels he owes those around him a great debt. Stardust's effect embodies this, as its ability allows itself to absorb the destruction of a fellow card and instead offer itself in its place. These are two things that both Yusei and Stardust would need to grow from, and throughout the series this is what they did. Yusei was able to see himself as worthy of companionship. In fact, there are even more similarities with Stardust, in that it follows the long-standing tradition of the main character of the Yu-Gi-Oh! series to have its ace monster have exactly 2,500 attack points. Additionally, Another bonus thing, if you were to use Jaden's ace monster from the manga instead, elemental hero Terra Firma, then each ace monster is also a unique type of card to the previous one, normal, fusion, synchro, Xyz, pendulum and link. So Stardust has a lot of alternate forms, in fact the most of all the Sino dragons. So. Let's go through them all. First of all, he has a younger form, which is Debris Dragon, a rising form, Shooting Riser Dragon, his base form, Stardust Dragon, his upgraded forms, Shooting Star Dragon, Shooting Star Dragon TG Expansion, Cosmic Blazer Dragon, and Shooting Quasar Dragon. His base form's manga counterpart is Stardust Spark Dragon, and that card's upgraded forms are Stardust Chronicle Spark Dragon and Stardust Cipher Divine Dragon. He also has a Majestic form, Majestic Star Dragon, an Assault form, Stardust Dragon Assault Mode, and a Malefic form, Malefic Stardust Dragon. And as well, there are some warrior variations of Stardust, such as Stardust Warrior, Stardust Charge Warrior, and Stardust Assault Warrior. We could also cover the host of support cards he has, but this isn't a Stardust archetype video, and we still have five more dragons to cover, so moving on. Red Dragon Archfiend, known in the Japanese as Red Daemon's Dragon. Requires one tuner and one or more non-tuners. His effect is, after damage calculation, if this card attacks a defense position monster your opponent controls, destroy all defense position monsters your opponent controls. During your end phase, destroy all other monsters you control that did not declare an attack this turn. This card must be face up on the field to activate and to resolve this effect. First released alongside Stardust Dragon in 2008's TCG collectible Tin Wave 1, the Stardust Tin had a secret rare Stardust, while the Red Dragon Tin had a secret rare Red Dragon Archfiend. Both would also be released in the booster pack Duelist Genesis a couple days later. However, unlike Stardust Dragon, Red Dragon Archfiend was unattainable as a ghost rare in this set, being only available in Ultra and Ultimate Rare. Red Dragon Archfiend is wielded by the signer Jack Atlas. When he summons this monster, to the field, he chants, the ruler's heartbeat will now file through here. Take witness to its creation, shaking power. Synchro summon, my very soul, Red Daemon's Dragon. Red Dragon Archfiend embodies Jack's will to be number one through pure dominance in power. Its effect punishes other monsters that don't try to match its strength or those who refuse to fight. The dragon will even destroy its own allies, which is very reminiscent of how in Jack's quest for power, he had abandoned his own friends in order to become 
the king. Speaking of power, Red Dragon Archfiend is not only the strongest Cyanar Dragon in terms of attack points, but also as the ace monster of the main rival of the series, it means it too follows a similar pattern like Stardust did. For Red Dragon Archfiend and all other rival aces, it has exactly 3000 attack points. In terms of alternate forms, it has the second highest of the Cyanars, just below Stardust. It has a rising form, Red Rising Dragon, its base form, Red Dragon Archfiend, two upgraded forms, Red Nova Dragon and Red Supernova Dragon, an alternate universe form seen in Yu-Gi-Oh! Arc 5, Scarlight Red Dragon Archfiend, which could be evolved into Tyrant Red Dragon Archfiend. It has a manga counterpart in Hot Red Dragon Archfiend, and that monster's upgraded forms were Hot Red Dragon Archfiend Abyss, Hot Red Dragon Archfiend Bane, and Hot Red Dragon Archfiend King Calamity. It also had a majestic form, Majestic Red Dragon, and an assault form, Red Dragon Archfiend Assault mode. And again, this monster has a variety of support cards too. Black Rose Dragon requires one tuner and one or more non-tuner monsters. Its effect is when this card is synchro summoned, you can destroy all cards on the field. Once per turn, you can banish one plant type monster from your graveyard, then target one defense position monster your opponent controls, change that target to face up attack position, and if you do, its attack becomes zero until the end of this turn. First released in the TCG's 2008 booster pack, Crossroads of Chaos, it was available in Ultra, Ultimate, and Ghost Rare. Black Rose Dragon is wielded by Akiza Izinski. When she summons Black Rose, she chants, Chilling flames engulf the entire world. Pitch dark flower set into bloom. Synchro summon appear now, Black Rose Dragon. Black Rose reflects Akiza's uncontrollable nature that manifested as her psychic powers. Through them, she would cause a lot of harm and destruction to others throughout her life, eventually leading to her pushing everyone away as to not get close. Black Rose Dragon, when it is summoned, destroys everything around it, be it friend or foe. Akiza would eventually get past this through the help of Yusei offering her his hand and herself being able to take control of her own powers. Sadly, from this point onward, the rest of the Sino Dragons never got any upgraded forms. Only Stardust and Red Dragon Archfiend have any, so it's a bit of a shame. However, Black Rose does appear to have three younger forms, Red Rose Dragon, White Rose Dragon, and Blue Rose Dragon. When those monsters are combined together, you get the Cross Rose Dragon. Its base form was Black Rose Dragon, and its alternate manga form was Black Rose Moonlight Dragon. And we also have a couple of support cards. It's worth mentioning that despite the lack of upgraded forms, Black Rose was seen as a very powerful sign of dragon on its own, as it was the first of all of them to be put on the Forbidden and Limited list, being limited to one as of the 1st of September 2009. This limiting would last for one whole year before it was returned back to free. The only other sign of dragon to have ever been placed on the ban list is actually our next card. Ancient Fairy Dragon requires one tuner and one or more non-tuner monsters. Its effect is once per turn you can special summon one level 4 or lower monster from your hand. You cannot conduct your battle phase the turn you activate this effect. Once per turn you can destroy as many field spells on the field as possible and if you do gain 1000 life points. Then you can add one field spell from your deck to your hand. First released in the Collectible Tins 2009 Wave 1 as a secret rare and then as an Ultra, Ultimate and Ghost rare in Ancient Prophecy, Ancient Fairy Dragon could be argued to be one of the most powerful sign of dragons in the real world as due to its effect it was made forbidden as of the 21st of May 2018. Now some of you might be asking, how could it be that strong if it took 9 years to be banned? Well, it all stems from how both field spell cards have grown in strength over the years, as nowadays field spells are usually the linchpin of a deck. The same applies to its special summoning ability too. Without a hard once per turn, this means users can keep special summoning monsters over and over again, extending their plays long past intended lengths. All they need to do is remove Ancient Fairy Dragon from the field and put it back, and yeah. Basically, the moral of the story is, cards need to be hard once per turn to stop brokenness. Look at Firewall Dragon. Ancient Fairy Dragon outwardly represents Luna's lack of confidence. Being the youngest of the signers, her monster reflects this as it only has 2,100 attack points, making it, in fact, the weakest of all the signer dragons. As well, its level of 7 ties it with the lowest leveled of the signer dragons too. Despite this initially though, Luna would grow throughout the series, gaining much confidence in herself that would eventually lead to her curing all the denizens of the monster spirit world, fulfilling the wishes 
of the ancient fairy dragon to protect them. This reflects in much the same way ancient fairy dragon's ability to heal the user with its final effect. Also, while it has no upgraded forms, it does have its base form, ancient fairy dragon, and its alternate manga counterpart form, ancient pixie dragon. Black Winged Dragon, known in the Japanese as Black Feather Dragon. Requires one tuner plus one or more non-tuners. If you would take damage from a card effect, place one Black Feather Counter on this card instead. This card loses 700 attack for each Black Feather Counter on it. Once per turn, you can remove all Black Feather Counters on this card, then target one face-up monster your opponent controls. That target loses 700 attack for each Black Feather Counter you removed. And if it does, inflict damage to your opponent equal to the attack lost by this effect. Released and appear as the cover card for the 2010 TCG set The Shining Darkness as a Ultra, Ultimate and Ghost Rare. While this card is heavily related to the Blackwing archetype, it's not technically actually a part of it. The reason that this is the case is because of that little tiny hyphen right there. Because what that hyphen means is there are Black Wings and then there are the Black Wings. Sadly in Yu-Gi-Oh it makes all the difference. Blackwing Dragon was wielded by Crow Hogan. When he summoned the monster, he would chant, Darkened Gales become the wings that soar from resolved hope. Synchro Summon soar Black Feather Dragon. In terms of the relationship between Blackwing Dragon and Crow Hogan, it's interesting to note that Crow and Yusei Fudo are both very similar if you look at them on paper. Both are selfless and always aid those in need. This is further cemented by the fact that Yusei was the one to actually pass down his mark of the sign of dragon down to Crow. So if this is the case, then why didn't Crow inherit Stardust Dragon? Well, they do actually differ in a way, and that is in how Crow is shown to be more impulsive as opposed to Yusei's stoic calmness. Crow's Blackwing Dragon, with its 2,800 attack points and ability to weaken itself in order to nullify damage, shows Crow is much more willing to take risks. The more Blackwing Dragon weakens itself, the more feather counters it can accumulate, and thus the more damage it can dish out later. A high risk, high reward scenario. In fact, another little tidbit about Crow is that now that we know he was originally meant to be a Dark Signer, that makes the Dark attributes of the monster seem almost like foreshadowing to his possible fate in the anime. And there's no upgraded forms to this monster apart from its base form, Blackwing Dragon, and its dual dragon manga counterpart, Black Feather Dark Rage Dragon. Life Stream Dragon requires one tuner and power tool dragon. When this card is synchro summoned, you can make your life points become 4,000. You take no effect damage. If this face up card on the field would be destroyed, you can banish one equipped spell card from your graveyard instead. First released in Extreme Victory in Ultra and Ultimate Rarity, you might have noticed throughout this video that both this monster and Red Dragon Archfiend are the only ones that never got to be a cover card, nor did they ever have ghost rare versions of themselves printed. Well, I mean, at least one of Red Dragon Archfiend's alternate cards got to be a cover card, but this card, well, it got nothing. Poor guy. In fact, it was even shafted in the anime by the fact that it got pushed to much, much later in the series. And it also got a little bit of a shaft in the manga as well, because this card didn't get a manga counterpart. Power Tool Dragon did, but we'll talk about that in a sec. Livestream Dragon was wielded by Leo, and is in fact the only one of all the Sino Dragons to be a tuna monster as well. In fact, it is currently the most powerful tuna monster in the entire game, along with it also being the highest level tuna monster too. When Leo summoned this monster, he would chant, The courage and power to protect the future of the planet is a revolution. Synchro Summon, Evolve, Livestream Dragon. Now keep in mind that Livestream Dragon was initially sealed inside armor at the start of the 5D series. Due to this, it took on the form of Power Tool Dragon instead, which served as Leo's first ace monster. When he would summon that, he would chant, Docking Strength with Courage to Protect World Peace. Synchro Summon, Envoy of Love and Justice, Power Tool Dragon. Unlike the other signers, Power Tool Dragon and Livestream Dragon represent a positive change in Leo that occurs over the course of the series. Power Tool was indicative of all the childish things about Leo, only really wanting to be a signer because, well, it's cool and his sister was as well. Power Tool itself looks childish with its colour scheme and toy-like design. However, after maturing throughout the series and going through some hardships, Leo's true colours are revealed, embracing a will to help others he can 
cares about first and think less about himself. It is from this that Livestream Dragon emerges from its shell, and Leo can grow into the duelist he was always meant to be. And as we mentioned earlier, ironically, despite Livestream Dragon being the true sign of Dragon, it was in fact its downgraded form that was given a manga counterpart in the form of Power Tool Mecha Dragon. Livestream Dragon would receive no such dual dragon form. And we have one final monster to cover, and that is the Crimson Dragon himself, Ultimaea to Zulkin. This card's original level is always treated as 12. Cannot be synchro summoned, must be special summoned from your extra deck by sending two level five or higher monsters you control with the same level to the graveyard. One tuner and one non-tuner and cannot be special summoned by other ways. Once per turn, when a spell or trap card is set on your side of the field, except during the damage step, you can special summon one power tool synchro monster or one level seven or eight dragon type synchro monster from your extra deck. Cannot be targeted for attacks or by card effects while you control another synchro monster. Now I said Crimson Dragon, but believe it or not, the Crimson Dragon and Ultimaea to Zulkin are not actually the same monster, despite them looking very similar. As we mentioned earlier, the Crimson Dragon is from the anime and is a cosmic entity made of pure sacred fire. It acts as the physical embodiment of the mighty dragon star and is at the end of the day, a good dragon. Ultimaya to Zulkin is from the Yu-Gi-Oh 5D's manga and is instead an entity of pure evil. It was the first dark synchro monster to appear, being that of a level zero monster. In fact, the creature was once known as the ultimate god. Rex Goodwin once stated the ultimate god was in some way the reasoning behind the creation of all the dual dragons. Rex wanted to resurrect it and control its power for himself, which he does manage to accomplish by creating the ultimate god card, Ultimaya to Zulkin. However, he would eventually increase the monster's power by upgrading it into its final form, Phantasmal Lord Ultimal Bishbalkin, known in the Japanese as Ultimate Phantasmal God Ultimal Bishbalkin. Finally, this monster has a Link Monster counterpart called Dual Link Dragon, the Dual Dragon. And with that, guys, that was the sign of dragons. Let me know what you thought in the comment section below, guys. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you had to be a signer, which signer would you be? Which mark of the Crimson Dragon would you like to have? And which signer dragon would you like to wield? 